activities in India, embassies in Mexico, France, Cuba, Afghanistan, and Syria, the UN mission in New York City, and the Ministry of External Affairs and Ministry of Defense in India. He has also worked in the UN headquarters in New Delhi, worked as a consultant on social development. He reopened the Indian embassy in Kabul in November 2001 after the new regime took over in Afghanistan. His father, B. Mukhopadhyay, was a very famous doctor of his time in Bihar. He has served in various capacities in the media and culture wings of the Ministry of External Affairs. He also coordinated the year-long festival of India, the I Ane the I Inde in France, 1985 to 86, as India's representative to the third committee of the UN in New York, 1996 to 1999. He dealt with issues relating to social development, human rights, and the advancement of women. He was also invited to join the UN Secretariat as a consultant on social development for the preparatory processes of the Copenhagen Social Summit plus five UN General Assembly Special Session 2000, for which he wrote reports on the social impact globalization. He also then spent six months, October 2009 to March 2010, at the Carnegie, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Washington, as a visiting scholar. Mr. Mukhopadhyay careers in the India Foreign Service has been notable for the range of his professional experience. These include media, culture, human rights, social development, defense, and security, and conventional political and diplomatic assignments. Uh, this session will be co-shared by Dr. Rafikul Haider. Presently, Dr. Rafikul Haider, Chief Research Officer, Forest Research Wing of Bangladesh Forest Research Institute, is the director of the institute. Dr. Rafikul Haider holds BSc and MSc in Botany from Sotogram University. He later obtained his PhD in plant ecology from Jahangirnagar University. He joined the institute in 1993 as a senior research officer. He started research on coastal afforestation techniques, but later he did research in Sylvie Culture Research Department, Seed Horticulture de uh, Department, Training and Technology Transfer Unit, and Minor Forest Product Division. He researched the propagation, management, and preservation of non-timber forest products, including medicinal plants. Dr. Haider won the Honorable Prime Minister's National Award for Tree Planting 2017 in, in the Research, Innovation, and Conservation category for preserving germoplasm of 221 species of medicinal plants. He edited a book titled Extended Information and Technology of Bangladesh Forest Research Institute, published in 2020. The national award-winning scientist has published more than 30 research articles in local and international journals. In addition to his research, he served as an external examiner at the Institute of Forest and Environmental Science, Sotogram University, Sajalal University of Science and Technology, Forest, Forestry Discipline, Silet, and as a guest speaker in the Institute of Forest Science and Technology. We have with us architect Priyam Ballab Goswami, Priyam Gallab Goswami is the principal and co-founder at Magnidas, a design and architectural firm located in Delhi and Jorhat, Assam. He graduated from the School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi in 2010, and since then he has been working in the field of architectural design for a plethora of projects varying in typology, scale, and locations. His practice offers design services for agriculture, master plan, landscape, and interior designs across the country. Some of the noteworthy, uh, noteworthy projects that he has been associated with include Krishi Bhavan, Bhavanishwar, Ahmedabad University, Rupohi Pathar Sports Complex, etc. Priyam has been keenly interested in bamboo construction since his students' years and has participated in numerous bamboo designs and build workshops and seminars in India and many other countries. Today, he also conducts various training workshops and speaks in national and international seminars on the potential of bamboo as a constructional, uh, construction materials. He is a visiting faculty at the School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi, and is also closely associated with the Rainforest Research Institute, Jorhat, for their bamboo training programs. He has also designed some innovative bamboo structure for different projects. One such project is the footbridge near Taj Vivanta, Guwahati. His lifelong dreams is to bring bamboo 
into the uh, mainstream construction industry. His areas of interest include the vernacular architecture, landscape integrated build environments, disaster rehabilitation, public participatory projects, and natural farming, sustainability, bamboo construction, etc. Presently, he is working at Magnidas Design at Jorhat as proprietor and principal architect since April 2017 and also working at Magnidas Design Private Limited in Delhi as director and principal architect since December 2012. Before this, he worked as project architect at RHAA Var Mueller Architects and Integral Designs in New Delhi. Today, we have with us Nirupal Odhikari. He will be joining us online. Uh, architect Nirupal Odhikari is a graduate of City College of New York. He founded Avari in 2007 in order to uh, reappropriate traditional materials like bamboo and art in the contemporary architectural context. When the earthquake of April 2015 struck Nepal, all of his structures survived unscathed, including two buildings that were built in the Epic Center. In the last five years, he has built many structures like government schools, libraries, community centers, homes, and luxury hotels. One of his biggest achievements has been provide a new reputation to the dying building crafts. pre earthquake people thought bamboo and art were weak and retro, while now his buildings are coming up in the major urban areas of Nepal. He has mobilized farmers to plant bamboo along the riverbanks of Situan, which apart from the restoring land provides income through various crafts based opportunities. He teaches at Kathmandu University and has trained un, uh, hundreds of architects and artisans. He was a finalist of the 2018 Architectural Review Emerging Architects Award. Avari is a socially and environmentally committed research design and construction firm that examines, encourages, and celebrates the vernacular architectural tradition of Nepal. As Nepal possesses sophisticated traditional knowledge of natural materials like adobes, bamboo, stones, and reed, Avari as a research and design firm that writes that tries to pr promulgate these materials into contemporary design practices. Today again we have online with us Kevin Rowell. Kevin Rowell is not coming. Okay. Uh, then we have with us uh, Tuan Man. Guyen, uh, online from, from Vietnam. He is here only? Okay. So, architect Duan Man uh, Guyen established the architectural practices Casu Collective in 2018 after nearly 10 years working in the United States. He currently works on a number of projects related to ecological design at various scales. Many uh, projects are designed with bamboo from a small townhouse to cultural and hospitality projects. Bamboo is not only employed as building materials for architecture, but also as a conceptual device for landscape and urban design. A key project that the practice has been working on is the Than Tam Bamboo Eco Park in Than Hoa, Vietnam, where Kesu Collective has been assisting the client to develop the master plan strategies, landscape designs, and the international friendship bamboo garden and architectural design for major buildings such as the Lam Son Bamboo Campus at the Bamboo Museum. Tuan graduated from Hanoi Agricultural University and trained in urban design with a con uh, concentration on heritage and sustainable development by Hanoi Agriculture University and uh, Toulouse Agriculture University, France. He holds another master degree at the Center for Agriculture, uh, Science and Ecology as collaboration between Skidmore, Owings and Merrill's and Rensselaer Polytechnic in New York City. In addition to his practice, he is lecturer at the Hanoi University of Agriculture, teaching at the Department of Advanced Agriculture and the France Graduate Agriculture Program. Tuan is also a world bamboo ambassador and is committed to promote bamboo innovation in Vietnam and worldwide. Uh, again, uh, we have with us Mr. Deron Buer online, who is joining us online. Global, uh, Darren Boer, Global Account Representative. Darren has had a 30 plus years career as an entrepreneur and land developer with Global Reach. He brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to his role as Global Account Representative with Pure Life Carbon. Darren's careers has taken him internationally, which provides him with extensive 
knowledge of business behavior and protocols within the industrial sector and local governments throughout South Asia, including Thailand, the Philippines, Cambodia, India, and Singapore. Daron is active with several local communities groups and is a proud grandfather of eight beautiful children. We have Dr. Si Ming Huang. Dr. Si Ming Huang is a director for a manufacturer and e-commerce research center, National Sungsang University, Taiwan. He is a certified public accountant, Australia, British Computer Association fellow, UK, and world-class professor, Indonesia. He is a famous scholar in computer auditing and AI for SDGs. He is the president for International Computer Auditing Education Association, Canada. He was the president for International Chinese Information System Association, USA. He served as a board member for several uh, financial institutions such as PwC Educational Foundation, Taiwan, Small and Medium Enterprise Credit Guarantee Fund of Taiwan, etc. Two of his books have sold more than 20,000 copies. His innovation, Zip's Law, Text, Analytic, and Meta Modeling for Processing Discovery have been widely used in industry. In the recent year, Professor Huang is working on bamboo innovations for SDGs projects in Taiwan and India. His unique and innovative training ecosystem has been well recognized by many NGO and invited to as keynote speaker for the World Bamboo Congress. His team has also been successfully to build a high-performance bamboo uh, charcoal machinery. Many new bamboo technology and products have been driven from his team and lead Taiwan bamboo industry for the new future. We have Tonmoy Photosurgy with us. Tonmoy Photosurgy is a licensed architect with 10 years of experience. He has worked with several architectural consultancy and construction firm, including Cox Bazar Depart Department Authority as an individual consultant architect. Cox Bazar Development Authority as an in uh, individual consultant architect. He is now working with international organizations for migration as senior program assistant with the shelter NFI unit leading the design and construction team in the Rohingya crisis response. In, in this role, he has been actively involved in developing shelter designs and technical documentation for shelter projects in the camp and in monitoring and supervision of shelter construction. Additionally, he is responsible for design multiple bamboo facilities for IOM health, protection site management units working in the Cox Bazar Rohingya camps. He has designed bamboo facilities for UN, INGO, and Government of Bangladesh division, which are contributing to the response. We have with us Bibhuti De Bormon. Bibhuti De Bormon has a postgraduate degree in management with a focus on resource mobilities and product management. He has 25 years experience working in the humanitarian development sector for multiple agencies and in various fields. He began working with IOM in 2017 in the initial emergency response with the Rohingya crisis in Cox Bazar. In 2018, he joined the Bamboo treatment team in its pilot phase, helping the sparehead Bamboo treatment for the response. Through the construction and completion of the IOM's Bamboo treatment facility in 2019, he has created, he has operated as the senior project assistant on ground managing and upscale production to meet the needed response for treated bamboo in the Rohingya camps. Through these processes, he has developed and maintained IOM's ongoing relationship with the Bangladesh Forest Research Institute and the Bangladesh Department of the Environment. He now oversees both of the facilities ongoing treatment production and the IOM's senior shelter focus focal for Technaf district of Cox Bazar. Sir, may I now request you kindly to start the session? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nitu, for uh, for those introductions. I think what we have we may have lost in time, we have probably gained in the knowledge of our uh, experts. Uh, on behalf of my co-chair and colleague, uh, Mr. Rafikul Haider, director of the Bangladesh uh, Forest Research Institute, uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this third session uh, on bamboo. Uh, we had a session number one, which was on bamboo and climate change. A session number two, which was bamboo and livelihoods and impact on economy and so on. And this third session attempts to, I think, sum it all up and put it all together with some extra dimensions on bamboo, housing, shelter, including in situations like, you know, uh, 
um, like situations like the Rohingya crisis, disaster related issues. Um, and we really have a very ample group of uh, leading experts to talk to us about uh, these subjects. So I think without further ado, on behalf of my co-chair, I would like to invite our first speaker, uh, Nitu, will it be, uh, where's Nitu? Yeah, will it be the first speaker online or we just go according to the order here? Okay. So uh, may I first invite uh, architect Priyam Vallabh Goswami uh, from India to uh, make his presentation. A very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I thank uh, Balipara Foundation and uh, everyone here in Dhaka for giving us such a warm welcome and uh, for all sharing all your hospitality on us. Uh, we'll uh, be going back with a very enriched experience. Uh, I especially thank, uh, uh, thank Mr. Kameshala from uh, South Asia Bamboo Foundation for uh, giving us this opportunity to uh, come and share our experiences with you. So, is there a portable uh, microphone? All right. All right. Yeah, I'd much rather walk around with you. Uh, the food in Dhaka is so good, I am having a little bit of food coma. So I prefer to walk around a little bit, okay? Uh, so pardon my nuances. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm Priyambala Goswami, practicing architect from, uh, uh, from Jorhat in Assam, uh, a neighboring place from here. Uh, uh, Assam, as uh, you know, is uh, very close to uh, Meghalaya. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, what we have been doing in various parts of uh, Northeast India. And Northeast India, of course, comprises of eight uh, states, uh, as you can see. And we are in Assam, somewhere in the center. And, uh, and we have a rich uh, tradition of bamboo craft, uh, in both in terms of uh, you know, handicrafts uh, and uh, you know, various other utility items like fishing equipments, uh, utensils, uh, we, uh, and also a very rich tradition of uh, building in bamboo. So uh, in, in all different parts of Northeast, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have different styles of uh, construction, but uh, uh, bamboo has always been uh, uh, predominantly the main material of construction because it's so abundant and uh, because of that people have a, a, a traditional knowledge of uh, using bamboo in construction. They know when to harvest the bamboo, which, uh, which uh, day of the lunar month is, uh, is good for uh, harvesting the bamboo, when, uh, what time of the day is good, what time of the year is a good time to harvest how to do some traditional uh, uh, treatments for, uh, for the preservation of bamboo. Like, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, traditionally, uh, there was not so much of chemicals that were used for uh, treatment. It was mostly like soaking in the running water or you know, different or uh, with on, in hot water or something like that. Also, smoke treatment is a very useful uh, treatment that uh, is done post application also. Now, uh, I'll not go too much uh, into all those details, but uh, I'd like to uh, show you some of the different housing typologies that exist in uh, Northeast India. Uh, I'm, uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'll not be able to touch each and every type of house, but very briefly, just to give you an uh, idea. This is a traditional bamboo and mud house in Assam. It's basically bamboo walls and then mud is plastered on this. Uh, these are some stilt houses from uh, Arunachal Pradesh. <clears throat> some stilt houses from Assam, again belonging to the Taifake house, uh, Taifake uh, tribe. Uh, these are from Garo Hills in Meghalaya, Mizoram. Uh, these are again from Assam, but these are fairly new type of uh, houses. Here 
you'll notice the uh, the walls are all paneled walls and uh, the uh, the framework is made of wood and the infill is done with uh, woven bamboo and then plastered with mud or with uh, or with cement nowadays uh, which is like this this is a uh, this is a traditional one where the uh, plastering was done uh, i think with lime plaster uh, but the problem with uh, this is that with, you know, when we use uh, mud, uh, the mud wears off uh, after some time. So uh, nowadays it's being replaced with cement. So apart from uh, housing construction, uh, uh, bamboo is also used for um, scaffolding uh, for uh, to build concrete houses, uh, high-rise houses. Of course, this is not a picture from Northeast India. It's probably Hong Kong, but uh, it, it just you get the point. Uh, it's also used for uh, for uh, uh, as props for concrete formwork. It's very common. It's it's used for temporary installations like uh, in Assam. Uh, these puja pendles are very common, and also for other events uh, uh, and functions, uh, these kind of temporary uh, pendles are used. It's used for some temporary art installations also sometimes. So there are uh, some. Uh, uh, some different uses of uh, of uh, bamboo in construction. <clears throat> Other than uh, housing itself, uh, bamboo is also used for some bridges. So there are different types of bridges. Uh, we have stilted bridges like those, uh, which are very temporary in nature. We have hanging bridges like these in uh, in Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, we have uh, suspension bridges like those, also very uh, lo uh, local tech that has been used in this. And uh, we also have some arch bridges like this. This bridge was uh, uh, a demonstration bridge in Kaziranga National Park. I think uh, it was built by Kamish ji uh, way back in 2001. But uh, it, this does not exist anymore. So, uh, and these are also some other structures that uh, CBTC uh, uh, designed and built in Assam. Uh, some housing topologies some uh, hospitality projects, uh, things like that. These are more modern structures. Now, uh, the way we try to engage rural communities uh, in into uh, architecture and uh, how we uh, try to um, extend this uh, idea of using bamboo as a mainstream construction material, which uh, was uh, mentioned in my introduction, is is through a two-pronged uh, strategy that we uh, take up. One is a design intervention. Of course, we provide the design uh, to make uh, bamboo more acceptable uh, uh, to the to the common people, and also to develop this necessary skill set because uh, we uh, we can't just design bamboo structures for our clients. They also want us to provide with the construction services or to uh, understand uh, like where they can find the necessary skill set. So that is also something that we do. So uh, talking about design intervention, firstly, I'd like to show you a project. This is in Bangladesh. This uh, is in a, uh, uh, some of you may be aware of this project. It's called the Handmade School for the Meti Foundation uh, near Dinajpur. And it's a two-story structure, uh, mud and bamboo. It's called the Handmade School because it was entirely made by the villagers themselves. It was a completely community participatory kind of a project. And this was uh, the first project that inspired me as an architecture student to, uh, to explore the uh, potential of bamboo and the community, uh, the traditional knowledge of the community to build or to design in bamboo structures. So <clears throat> this is one structure that uh, we worked on uh, uh, right before COVID. It's a model Anganwadi structure, uh, uh, Anganwadi center. Anganwadis are Pre, uh, like play schools uh, and uh, uh, local, uh, they also act like local health centers also. So uh, here, uh, this is in Meghalaya, uh, in West Garo Hills, and we we try to follow, uh, we try to uh, uh, respect the local uh, culture and the local climate uh, while designing this. And uh, you'll see that apart from bamboo, we have also used uh, mud blocks and uh, wattle and daub walls. And also, it's a very energy efficient kind of structures. 
Uh, we did another one in East Khasi Hills, but of course, uh, in the Khasi Hills, the climate is very different. So, of course, the design response was also quite different. Uh, this is a, a disaster shelter that we did in in Lakhimpur in uh, in a uh, village which uh, used to get flooded every year uh, because of the uh, flooding of the Brahmaputra, and this was a stilted structure. Uh, and uh, the, uh, this is some kind of a local uh, housing topology which is uh, around. Of course, you can see that people have always been building with uh, on stilts because uh, the area floods and the superstructure is uh, made of bamboo. So we try to follow the same uh, topology, try to include the, uh, the, uh, the wisdom of the, uh, of the people that is available to us locally and use that in our design. And uh, so this is how the structure is. Uh, it's a two-story structure. So during the uh, flooding months, of course, it acts like a relief shelter. During the non-flooding months, the lower floor, which is empty, acts uh, as a uh, uh, livelihood uh, training center for skill development uh, for the local community. And of course, uh, right when the structure was complete, then COVID hit us, and this became a, a, a disaster relief shelter of another nature. So that's one. This is another project we uh, we did. Uh, we have been associated with this project for some quite some time now. It's an eco village in a place called Tengani. Uh, it's next to a river, next to a, a wildlife sanctuary in Assam. And here, like this is a river, uh, Dhansiri. And these are uh, uh, some uh, pictures of the uh, of the locality. You can see uh, they're very. Uh, it's a very Poor community, uh, no access to roads or uh, proper drinking water. Very recently, they got access to electricity. So we tried to, uh, and uh, there's a uh, there's a road that goes to the village, but there's a river between the village and the road, so they need to cross uh, like this on boat uh, during the monsoon season. And they keep making a makeshift bridge uh, during the uh, uh, during the non-monsoon seasons. Of course, they need to build this bridge every year. So we came up with a uh, master plan for them, and uh, which was based on uh, various verticals. Uh, we tried to create a agriculture-based tourism uh, economy for them. And uh, it's still a long way to go for them, but they've made some small beginnings already. Uh, I'll not go too much details into this because uh, of the paucity of time. Uh, this is a rendering of the of the master plan. Uh, you can see uh, we uh, proposed a, a bamboo bridge and uh, some uh, some bamboo structures. Uh, like uh, uh, we uh, we have a weaving school, we have uh, a primary school, we have a college, we have a, a restaurant and a resort for outsiders to come, and then we also have some housing. These are some of the uh, building types that we had uh, in the in the project. Uh, then um, a couple of years ago, we did some prefab uh, bamboo structures with uh, SABF, and uh, these are some of the prefab structures. So these were uh, designed to be knockdown structures, uh, very modular, based on an eight by four module, and you could just break them down and put it in a box and ship it to wherever and install it. So something like that. Uh, this is uh, what we did in Nagaland, uh, again, uh, trying to uh, respect the local housing typology there, of course, with a different purpose. <clears throat> this is a house under construction in uh, Jorhat, uh, again, a two-story structure, uh, lower floor is uh, on stilts and upper floor is uh, a bamboo structure for the house. A resort that uh, we did last year in Jorhat. I'll just brush through these images. Uh, this is a, a, a crafts uh, center that uh, we did in uh, in Kaziranga National Park. Uh, this is supposed to be a cafeteria and a display center for uh, for local handloom. So uh, this is in a village called Mopara, and the Ministry of Textiles, uh, Government of India, took up uh, adopted the village as a model village for uh, for the uh, handicraft. And uh, this is supposed to be a uh, display center. And again, even this place gets flooded. So uh, during floods, this could act as a 
uh, act as a relief shelter also. So dual purpose. Uh, this is a footbridge that uh, we did with Kamishji uh, last year. Uh, it's uh, it's of course a steel uh, bridge which is cladded in bamboo. It's in Guwahati and it's uh, uh, it's supposed to be a very iconic structure and uh, uh, to uh, be uh, to become the gateway to Guwahati for the entire northeast. Some images of now this has become a uh, it became a social media sensation also. This is uh, another footbridge we did in uh, Sukreshwar Mandir in uh, Guwahati. Here we try to uh, pick up some elements from the temple uh, nearby and use those elements in our uh, in our design. I'll not go into the details. A bus shelter we did in Khanapara in a very short time. Uh, the the second uh, uh, strategy we do oh, uh, that we do is the skill development part wherein we, we conduct training workshops and uh, we try to train uh, designers and artisans, craftsmen into uh, to uh, take up housing uh, bamboo construction. So uh, this was a workshop that was done way back in 2001 by uh, CBTC. Uh, Kamesi was a uh, head of CBTC at that time. And here uh, there were three uh, structures uh, that were uh, built, uh, designed and built during this workshop. Uh, this is one of the uh, structures, which is a bus shelter. This is another one, a uh, hyperbolic paraboloid structure. This is another uh, housing uh, type that was done. Uh, we did a construction workshop in 2018 in Arunachal Pradesh with York STEM. And uh, I'll just uh, take you through the process very briefly. Uh, this is the sketch that York had prepared. And we prepare the 3D uh, model of that. And then uh, this is the entire process of uh, right from harvesting to the grading and uh, uh, preparation of the uh, chemical for treatment, the vertical diffusion treatment, the cleaning, the cutting, that is yog. Um, uh, and in, in the structure, we, we did not use any iron nails or anything. We only use bamboo nails. So uh, he showed us how to make these bamboo nails and how to fix them in a way that it uh, like an interlocking manner and then uh, there are these rebars that are used to for the foundation so laying out of the foundation and you can see the it's such a lightweight frame that uh, it, it could be lifted by um, uh, it could be lifted manually and then we fixed up the structure and raised on the ground and the structure was done in a matter of about 10 days so it's a very fast method of construction. This is how the structure looks today. It, it's a T pavilion for the uh, for the Golden Pagoda Monastery in Namsai. Uh, then uh, this is about the uh, in 2019 there was a World Bamboo Workshop that happened in Manipur, and this is the entrance gate for that. And a lot of participants from across the world had come, and there were some demonstration uh, structures uh, that were also built during the workshop by various uh, participants. And uh, also different uh, construction techniques were also uh, tried out, experimented. Uh, we celebrated World Bamboo Day 2019 in uh, Imphal, uh, Patso, and we uh, conducted a workshop training local uh, artisans. And uh, this is a bus shelter that uh, we built in a matter of two and a half days. Uh, this is a... Um, a workshop for architects in uh, in the C CBTC that uh, uh, was conducted in 2019. Again, we tried many uh, many uh, experimental structures here. This is a workshop that uh, I did with uh, Rainforest Research Institute in uh, 2020, right before COVID, and uh, again with some local craftsmen, training them. Uh, and uh, this is these are some pictures from during construction, and then of course then there was lockdown, and uh, during the lockdown only some minimum work could be done, and this structure turned out like this later. Now this is a craft emporium for that they are using to display and uh, uh, display their craft goods. This is a bamboo treatment center that they uh, that uh, we designed and built in the RFRI. So um, like. 
you see we we get very hands on with the uh, with the uh, uh, imparting our uh, the uh, necessary skill required for bamboo construction and we like to like sit down with the community with the people and uh, try to train them how to use different uh, uh, alternative materials including bamboo so uh, i thank you for your patience thank you Uh, thank you, Mr. Priyambala Goswami, for very exciting presentation. Now, we have, we have a hurry, so we are not allowing any questions now, but you have uh, uh, privilege to discuss the matters during the tea times. So now, uh, we are, AR Nepal Odhikari from Nepal is, is online, so we are requesting Mr. Nepal Odhikari, please, go ahead. Is he here oh, online? Hi, do you, okay, please, do you see you my presentation? Yeah, please. please. Yeah, hello. Do you hear me? Yeah. Hello, do you hear me? Mr. Nepal, please, you can go ahead. Yeah, do you see my presentation? Okay, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. you. So you can hear me all right, no? Okay. All right, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, very nice to be here. Thank you, Kamesh Ji, for um, inviting. And it's nice to see some familiar faces. We have our bamboo entrepreneur, Habib, also. Nice to see that. So um, so I'm going to talk about uh, Nep. Uh, like what we are doing with bamboo in Nepal. Uh, so, so we work as an architecture company, architecture and engineering uh, firm. So what we're trying to do is, bamboo is one of our many vocabularies. We usually work with uh, earth also, uh, stone, or other uh, vernacular materials. So, you know, in Nepal, we have uh, uh, great vernacular traditions from the Himalayas to uh, the plains. And they have used bamboo and earth in various ways. Um, you know, if you see in the uh, in the plains, uh, we have bamboo structure, or in the mountains like this structure, like a bamboo and uh, adobe structure. Uh, <clears throat> you know, these uh, are uh, still uh, an existing and uh, it's existing tradition. Uh, According to the last census, we had 74% of our buildings are with uh, local materials. Or you go into the mountains, there are stone structures or beautiful bamboo structures. Uh, so this is a house I was documenting for four years. Every year, they have beautiful paints with different colors, um, showcasing, you know, the art. And also, you know, like bamboo maintenance, they see as a, as a ritual rather than a chore. Or we have this uh, bridge from 1895, a 30-meter long bridge, which unfortunately doesn't exist today. Uh, or we had similar traditions in along Nepal and Sikkim, Darjeeling border. You know, like these kind of bridges, uh, bamboo bridges used to be very common. But unfortunately, we've stopped uh, promoting this. You know, we think that's a very primitive. And uh, what we have is uh, this situation where you know, we neither have the tradition or the financial capability to build modern bridges, you know. So in that uh, context, if you look, you know, like uh, in Nepal still has only 17 percent um, buildings with cement. So majority of the building is still with earth and bamboo. And we are losing like uh, like this is a picture from Kathmandu in 1967 versus 2016. You know, a lot of these earth buildings, bamboo buildings are giving way to modern buildings, which unfortunately do, do not look great or do not represent the culture, right? Or, and this is what has happened to Kathmandu from a world heritage site. So why are people using cement? Because there is this myth that it is very strong. But last earthquake, we saw even the cement buildings uh, fall. You know, like this is photo from the epicenter. Or on the other hand, uh, traditional buildings like these survived, right? 
So in that context, we started this organization, uh, Bam uh, Abari, to uh, re-examine these materials so we in modern so we can use them in modern context. So two of the materials are bamboo and uh, earth. But I won't go too much about bamboo because we are talking to the experts here. Uh, so uh, one of the biggest innovations we had with bamboo is the treatment. You know, we um, took that um, Bushiri modified technique. You know, this was about 15 years ago when nobody was doing it. So we hacked this system and made a, a very simple system that can um, treat bamboo. Um, and it's uh, you can take it uh, to the farms and, you know, like treat bamboo in C2 or the uh, conventional system we use also, right? And then we did a lot of experiments with joints, you know, some metallic joints, some with cane or with bamboo. And one thing that worked really well is like putting this small metal piece um, for the connection joints, so where you can connect multiple pieces. So pre-earthquake, we had done, uh, this is from 2006, we had built this uh, structure. This was also close to the epicenter, you know, like people wanted a, a community hall. So we took the local um, uh, material and built this. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, this is about... 18 years and still new and people are still functioning with it uh, or we built this uh, school uh, you know for government uh, you know like our schools are pretty primitive I don't know how it is in, in in your area but here you know schools are made with concrete blocks and um, metal sheets but uh, and I was saying like why can't you use local materials for the same cost so we use some stone bamboo and slates um, with uh, like ventilations and beautiful mud plaster, which you don't have to maintain. And we use like whatever is local material. And we had just finished this school and what happened, incidentally, this happened to lie right at the epicenter of the earthquake. And uh, so this uh, building survived and all of a sudden everybody was talking about this building. Uh, so government showed a lot of interest, you know, a lot of international coverage we got for this. Um, so we we proposed to the government, you know, during the earthquake, about 15,000 schools had uh, collapsed. So we were like, why don't you build some of them, at least, with bamboo? So we provided this uh, proposal, and they were, like, very open, and uh, they gave the stamp of approval. It's, I think, one of the few cases in the world where earth and bamboo was, uh, you know, approved for public buildings. So we... Uh, took the uh, conventional design, did some modifications. So there's light ventilation, you know, like uh, better thermal insulation. And we put this uh, out as open source document. Uh, and then we built uh, many schools like this, like, uh, for example, this one in Dulikil, you know, uh, here, like the roof is bamboo, even the furniture is bamboo. So this was open source. Many, many people like copied these designs so in I think we built this in seven districts, uh, about 25 schools. I mean, it could have been more, but, you know, for for a starter, it's not bad. And uh, uh, people, women were making the bricks. Uh, the cost was, uh, the most majority of the cost was bamboo and labor. Only 11% of cement was used. So, in, in other words, 89% of the money stayed locally. Uh, so we did low-cost housing with uh, with these materials. And after that, one of our biggest projects was uh, a library in in Kathmandu. You know, we did this uh, a beautiful library which had just damage from the earthquake. So there were a lot of uh, uh, rare documents uh, that needed to be preserved. So we put that, and they wanted something quick and something beautiful, something that <coughs> represented Nepal's... Um, architecture so we use uh, you know like modern lighting uh, like some glass and 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 try to showcase the bamboo you know bamboo is as in our current region it's considered poor man's material but we wanted to show that it is can be beautiful and we expose this uh, 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 material and it's you know it was supposed to be a temporary structure but it's been there about eight years now and it's uh, every day, hundreds of people come to visit 
this library not only to read the books but now also to visit the architecture and it's also part of the uh, tourist trail you know um, so this is uh, the outside picture you know we use a lot of this is earth construction we have no use we don't use cement bamboo tiles um, like steel connections so uh, that was a pretty uh, uh, a uh, pretty important project, you know, it also gave us an international profile, you know, like we got a uh, few awards for that. Uh, and after that, we built, uh, more people got interested, you know, we got more ambitious. So now we did this two story uh, with earth and bamboo, you know, that we only use cement for the foundation and some uh, ring beams, no stabilization. Uh, here's, uh, here's this school, like a, again, a government school. You know, with a lot of beautiful play spaces, um, like uh, bamboo mats, uh, earth floor, uh, rainwater harvesting, you know, like passive solar. This area can get very hot, uh, can get up to 48 degrees. But when you enter, the first reaction of, of anyone is that, oh, my God, the temperature difference is amazing. Uh, so, uh, so we have, you know, as I said, it's very hot. So we've created some of these transitional spaces between two classes where kids can play. And the trust becomes uh, also a toy for them. You know, they can climb these uh, trusses and, uh, you know, it's part of the educational pedagogy. Um, so, so we build this structure, you know, like uh, you look at different view. Um, so, so look at this, uh, you know, it's a, classroom for government school you know for like for primary kids and most of them are orphans and it looks very modern but it's uh, you know it doesn't cost a lot of money it's better than cement and much it looks much better so here are different views uh, you know like halls we are doing um, like this uh, a, a library or even private homes uh, uh, with the uh, so, you know, when we started, like uh, just before the earthquake, uh, bamboo is considered as a very primitive material, like uh, only few people were using, you know, but now it's considered to be, it's, it's, it's become very aspirational, you know. We are now uh, actually, as we speak, we're building a monastery, you know, like a four-story monastery. It's, it's one of, it shows that uh, people are building faith in these materials, you know, so... Constraint of time, I won't go um, too much in the detail. So here's a three-story uh, bamboo structure we just completed, uh, or even urban structures we're doing. You know, in Kathmandu, there are quite a few houses that's coming up, uh, or, or these community halls. Um, so, so in terms of architecture, so as I said, the the shift in, in the perception that it's a con poor man's material has is changing. Um, so, and we've created a system, you know, not just like looking at architecture, but about land regeneration. For example, this is a land uh, on the left uh, was flooded and we restored bamboo. Um, so, you know, like this land, the white part is flood. And one year, four years later is like this. Eight years later, it's become, it's become very vibrant. You know, it's, it's, it's a biodiversity. So, yeah, with this, uh, I want to end. And also, you know, we're creating a full economy. We're making bicycles. Uh, you know, we're getting a lot of um, uh, university students, architects uh, involved, you know, like to create this, to make it a, a very glamorous material, right? Um, so thank you. Um, this is, if you want to check out more of our work, you can go to this website. Um, yeah, so this is a bicycle, we tricycle, we do, we, we run this in Kathmandu. It's pretty exciting. When you are next, you can visit us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nepal. I think we've had two really inspiring sort of presentations on bamboo architecture, bamboo housing. I think two or three very strong messages that come out is the link between housing and sort of public use. Uh, uh, bamboo housing that is accessible uh, to people for functional uses. The second is the sheer aesthetics of many of the, you know, housing and the constructions that we have seen, the beautiful colors that we saw with mud plaster. And the third, which I think was very interesting in uh, Nepal's presentation, 
which was the adoption by the government of bamboo for large scale you know school uh, construction and so on and i think i wish more governments um, including starting with ours would adopt bamboo and other sort of local vernacular architectures for public use in particular because quite apart from uh, the aesthetics and quite apart from the environmental use they also are in sync and in harmony with the culture uh, and the you know the local um, the uh, landscapes of the place so after jorhat in assam and india and then nepal uh, i have the privilege of introducing um, a, a, a wonderful architect from vietnam who's been following very similar principles very aesthetic very minimal as well uh, also integrated in many ways with landscapes like we saw in nepal's uh, presentation tuan manguyen uh, somebody who i first met at the world bamboo congress in imphal in manipur uh, that was there in priyam's uh, presentation and very glad to have him back at the balipara foundation this time and that too in bangladesh so that we can learn from uh, each other's experience uh, so this will be our third presentation on architecture uh, after this i think we have a couple of presentations that will address the issue of trade investment and entrepreneurship right is that next or after that okay so first we'll have uh, you know disaster relief construction and then we will have a couple of presentations on uh, the use of bamboo for entrepreneurship trade and investment uh, you know in other words scaling up to make it much more commercial uh, tuan uh, may i invite you to take the floor Hello. Um, my name is Chuan Nguyen. I'm an architect uh, based in Hanoi, Vietnam. And I have a pri privilege to be here with you. Um, and thank you again for Mr. Gautam and Mr. Kamesh and um, Balipara uh, Foundation to having me here. Um, can I have... Can have a next slide, please? So, um, um, there's some slide that Mr. Gautam, you have seen in Manipur. Uh, I, so, I will not go too much into uh, the traditional architecture of bamboo in Vietnam because I think time is short. But uh, an overview is that um, we are a small country, with, but very dense, uh, 94 million people, and um, we are the 14th populated country. Uh, but we have quite a lot of bamboo forest area, uh, 1.4 million hectares, which is uh, number four in the world after India, China, and, and Myanmar, I think. Next. Um, Although very uh, small country, uh, we have, have a long coastline and have many ecolo ecological regions. Um, uh, we have mountain, we have sea, and the highland, and uh, of course the two most important um, place for uh, rice production, which is the deltas, one in uh, the north, the uh, Red River Delta, and the south, Mekong Delta. And also, uh, we have a lot of ethnic, uh, 54 ethnic, uh, into, uh, four into eight main groups. So here's the, the delta. Um, uh, in the delta, especially in the north, there's a lot of tradition with bamboo. Uh, however, I realized that when compared with your other presentations, somehow we have we're losing that tradition so quick. Uh, if I go on the internet, it's very hard to find a decent bamboo, uh, traditional bamboo houses uh, because it disappeared and it's not documented, it's not being pictured. So that's why I would not go from it, but I, I would not show that, those kind of picture. Um, but we also have the same, um, uh, the, the, the same kind of, uh, working with bamboo in terms of uh, uh, everyday life objects like weaving basket, 
uh, everything's uh, two houses. But I realized that is the way for architects like us to rediscover the culture by using bamboo. Um, so from, for example, here, I uh, working with uh, furniture design, interior design. Um, this is a project for the company named Bamboo Vina. They make a craft bamboo and they are trying to revitalize uh, bamboo craft villages. So we do a uh, bookshelf with, with him. And also in the um, housing sector, we're trying to do like here uh, in uh, my work is work around the urban environment a lot. Um, I had, don't have so far many rural houses, but for example, here in the urban house, uh, we are trying to incorporate um, bamboo. Um, in this case, it's the structure only on the top, uh, rooftop for plantation for planting and also in the house, uh, bamboo engineered for the floor and um, natural bamboo for the ceiling. So we try to incorporate as much as we can in, uh, in modern projects. That's the, on the top. And also, um, so far, this project is uh, representing um, the most used uh, bamboo architecture in Vietnam right now, which is the hospitality sector. So now we can see a lot of bamboo, uh, like bungalow or these kind of um, houses in, uh, in the resort. So um, uh, that's why I also have this. So next slide. That's uh, an experimentation uh, in Hua Bình, um, in the north of Hanoi. So right now it's in construction, it's already uh, nearly finished. Yeah, that's the state where I took the picture before I came here. Uh, Two-story bungalow houses. Uh, we used that with um, a bamboo named Luong in, in Thanh Hoa. Uh, I think it's, I forgot the scientific name, but uh, the hollow and northern bamboo. Um, other uh, project in hospitality is uh, um, that one uh, that I have uh, other projects, uh, mostly in uh, design phases. So you can scroll through that rather quickly. It's the uh, restaurant uh, on near Hanoi, on the lake in, in Bavi. I have a lot of slides, so you can uh, just scroll through. So that uh, image. Uh, and also in the... Um, um, I, I, uh, I think it's interesting that uh, showing this, I'm trying to show um, how bamboo can enter different kind of typologies, like not only hospitality, but uh, somehow we can get um, bamboo into other sectors like housing, uh, as I show you, or also cultural um, uh, buildings, uh, even at the very modest scale. So, for example, this one is located in the Temple of Literature in the center of Hanoi, which is the first university of Vietnam. It's built uh, five, six hundred years ago. And uh, we are designing a landscape here. So, um, the landscape kind of representing a, it's more like a scenographic project showing how a, 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 a regular person in the village, they got educated and they become a Mandarin and they come back to the village. So that's why the concept is that we need to have a modest bamboo house uh, for him to study. And by doing that, I think what's interesting is that we not only design just a modern uh, looking building, but by doing this kind of cultural um, setup we rediscover the, the traditional way of doing with bamboo. Um, of course, we're gonna insert a few um, uh, modern, uh, uh, modern design in here, for example, the sliding door, or a few um, frame like uh, with bamboo, engineered bamboo, but it's interesting in that way to rediscover the culture. Uh, this one is for, uh, um, a bamboo factory, they have a garden of 1,300 square meter 
in front. And they asked us to do for them a showroom. So the concept is to have uh, a place uh, surrounded with living bamboo for the workers to relax and have a um, and her, have a reflecting pool in front of the building. And inside there will be places for people walking around, seeing the products. That's the view from the lake. Um, so the client is quite adventurous. They want to work with us because they are the bamboo factory. So they might they um, they are open to new idea and they. For example, for this one, they might want to clad the building with bamboo veneer, which is the technology that they just successfully um, uh, did uh, fabricated. So that that way, we can allow the roof to be that flat, uh, not uh, so steep. But traditionally, with thatch, we cannot have that kind of flat roof. That the uh, interior image. It's very narrow building. Um, other projects going on, uh, it might take a long time. Uh, this one is uh, um, a clinic, a training center for, for moving clinic in Haiti, which uh, when I work, when I was still in the, in the US and we was invited to provide them um, this, uh, this design so that um, this campus can run on its own energy by having solar panel and uh, harvesting uh, bamboo, local bamboo for, for the classroom and, and for the clinic room. And the idea is to have the landscaping edge uh, um, insert into the site regularly uh, so that you know, they can grow the bamboo over time and replace uh, the bamboo components. These are the few other, and so far, uh, the most, uh, the, the largest work that we take on is this one, it's the name Thanh Tam Bamboo Eco Park. So it's an ecological bamboo eco park in Thanh Hoa, uh, a province with a lot of bamboo, uh, very abundant. Um, it's uh, 300 kilometers from Hanoi and they have a rich uh, history. It's the, um, it's the native land of the King of Vietnam in 15th century Le Loi. Uh, just a few uh, existing uh, analysis. So the site is uh, 100 hectare inland and 60 hectare in the islands. So total area is 160 hectare. And the main program is um, spiritual, which is uh, some statue, uh, Zen, um, Zen Buddha, Buddhism pagoda, uh, a resort in that site, and uh, agricultural activities uh, on the other side of the river. And uh, the site itself have uh, 60 hectares alone uh, of natural bamboo. So um, we divided the, the, the land into different sectors. So inside that eco park, um, there's a lot of uh, different type of bamboo buildings like housing, um, a, a bamboo campus, a bamboo museum, and, and other structures, uh, the garden with pavilions, etc. So in this eco park, uh, the owner already invited some famous bamboo architect like Vo Chong Nghĩa um, in Vietnam and some other architect. Um, but I was uh, invited in to provide master planning. So I think Master planning is also something interesting that we haven't talked about, um, which is we've been uh, mostly talk see bamboo uh, in um, kind of an object uh, in a luxury setting in the in this resort, but uh, in this case, I I propose uh, beside the master planning, like why uh, uh, he he also asked me to design the bamboo museum, but. Uh, Instead, I think uh, I, I did the, uh, a design for Bamboo Museum, which is going on right now, but uh, I advised the owner to have a bamboo campus because I think a, a bamboo eco park cannot just have people coming in and then leave, but a bamboo campus can have more, many purpose. So people can come in, train, be trained, and uh, revitalize the, the craft of a bamboo craftsman of the regions 
because they are very experienced, but they don't have a place to practice and pass down the knowledge. Um, so just a, a quick run through of different places like housing uh, with the resort. Of course, there are a lot of bamboo structure in there. That's the center of the, uh, at the center of the Echo Park. So um, Mr. Vo Chong here, the famous bamboo architect, he have three buildings here, uh, a restaurant, a uh, reception hall, and a bridge. Um, but the thing is, again, bamboo is like object. So the three different buildings look very different and they don't relate to each other. And uh, besides, they use the bamboo, I think it's uh, Tiso Stachys, uh, Cementius, uh, is from the south of Vietnam. And the thing is, uh, people tend to replicate that everywhere. So, and here uh, is actually the, the other type of bamboo. So for example, here, I try to rework the area um, uh, of, the, of the park center and also have the building of the bamboo campus, this one next to it, and using the natural and the local bamboo. So you can see here is in the model, can you go back one slide? Um, one more. Go back one more slide. So this is the um, the studio where people can come in and get trained in terms of design. So um, the campus can work with the university architecture students to to um, to get more um, uh, knowledge on design. The other side of the of the courtyard is the. Uh, the construction building where bamboo component can be made and workshop can be hosted. Uh, on the other side of the lake can be bungalows for people to come in to get trained. They can be there for a week, a few days, or, or a month, depending on program. So this side section also show uh, how we can use the um, incorporate uh, bamboo uh, solar panel on the, on the roof to harvest energy. Just a few renderings and uh, of course the models. This is the bamboo museum. So this you you can slide more slide through it. Yeah, I would not talk too much on this project. So yeah, then there's a other park. Uh, and also, um, this is the um, the plant uh, of the bamboo garden. Uh, I think it's uh, impressive, impressive um, in terms of this eco park. They already have like 114 different species collected. Uh, but uh, I'm feel very privileged to work on this project because because um, it really show the, the power of collaboration. For example, here uh, with the Bamboo Garden, I got to work with the expert, um, Jan Oprint uh, from Belgium to advise me on planting the bamboo uh, for the landscaping that I want to, to have. And inside the garden, there's a few different uh, bamboo pavilions like this. That's the part in the island. So uh, I come back to Vietnam two years ago, and um, in this presentation, I tried to to, um, to to have an argument that you know, uh, even though the tradition disappear very quickly, um, bamboo can can be in our architectural project uh, by our practice. So. Uh, in our office, uh, we try to make model, as you see on those two other photos, and uh, we try to make workshop regularly and uh, have like the mock-up with the client and also con on construction sites. And I think that um, the practice here, there's many ways uh, for architect to practice uh, ecologically. Uh, like Priyam just said uh, earlier, um, beside design project, we can have, uh, we can give courses, we can uh, do um, uh, bamboo uh, workshops. So for example, here is a workshop in Dien Bien that 
I'm also a lecturer at uh, the Hanoi universities. So this one we collaborate with um, an university uh, Tasmania in Australia to go to the north of Vietnam to, to um, design cattle shelter. Um, so this program is really uh, uh, through bamboo we, uh, we, we see a different kind of client, not, not only human but other, uh, other species and I think it's important for ecologies. And even um, if in the mountain, bamboo is something people uh, are very familiar with, but they kind of losing the tradition, we come in to, to, um, to, to help them to re realize the, the power. Um, but it's easy to do. Uh, can you go back to the few slides? But in the urban area, I think bamboo is very strange. This image, uh, I just took before I came here, um, and I found out a very different um, uh, scenario in here. Like people, uh, this is in front of my office, and we have a class, we have a workshop. So I thought that the student want to do just a small thing, but they end up having that structure is like three meters height, and um, the this. By the way, this area is the um, uh, 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 urban housing collective, collective housing built on the 60s. Um, it is a, a Soviet Union of a new town at the time. And now um, it's quite, for us, I think it should be a heritage because the, they conserve the, the life of people. Um, you, can no, you can not see that kind of central courtyard anywhere else in Hanoi. In new development, there's no such kind of community gathering. So by doing that, I uh, see a lot of uh, interaction in here. First, the client, uh, uh, the people of the neighborhood, they are not happy because there's too many people in your courtyard. And then they see bamboo. So they don't know what to do with it. They tell me to tear it down and everything. But then when, it's, when bamboo becomes something more like formal, they like, oh, say, okay, um, actually you can keep it a, a few more days. And, uh, and also I have a lot of wasted, like uh, the, the bamboo pieces that is not used when the structure. So again, they told me to, to take it away, but then I found out that they actually need it. So after a day, people take the pieces of bamboo and um, Sorry for the long explanation, but I think in the urban environment, by doing that, we realize that bamboo have a place in uh, everyday life, just in, like in the past. People can have it at a simple structure, like a hanging thing. That's why they took it, or even if they want to burn it. So uh, that's an, quite an experience, and I think it's uh, actually um, the metaphor of, for bamboo, I think, is to, is, uh, is, is a way to discover the urban ecology of Hanoi or, or, or anywhere else. So moving forward, um, of course, uh, in the sector of hospitality and, how, uh, hospitality and cultural projects, we would continue to work with bamboo. But one of the projects that we are, we are trying to do is to provide housing for the Mekong Delta. So the Mekong Delta here, as you can see, uh, it's very similar to Bangladesh in terms of um, vulnerability. Uh, we have sea level rising, a satellite water coming in. We have a lot of floodings, and it's very um, now it's very uh, unpredictable because the Chinese uh, dams along the Mekong River. So at the same time, there's many forces affected the, the life livelihoods of people in here. So we are proposing to um, this uh, research uh, do for the Ministry of Construction. So we would uh, part of it. So the idea is to have modular housing um, for, for the regions. And um, I wish to have more bamboo in those uh, modular. So that's, that's one of the future work that we are, we are carrying on right now. So with that, I would end it with, you know, we can always learn from the past. For example, these regions 
This is the image of the vernacular house. And the next slide is going to be what we learn from it and, you know, have a modular that can expand so that, you know, um, it's going to give each household a, a, a place and also grow the community over time. And uh, with bamboo, I think it's possible. So I would like to end it here. Uh, thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tuan, um, for your presentation. Um, our next, I think, speakers are uh, from the IOM, uh, Mr. Tanmoy Bhattacharji and Vibhuti Dev Bormon. Are they here? Yeah. Okay. Please go ahead with your presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Co-Chair, especially this person in front of me to bring us uh, in this forum in the very last minute. And uh, I, and uh, I am welcoming you on behalf of IOM, International Organization for Migration, UN uh, Migration that uh, works for the displaced people. So. This our our um, this presentation is, is split into two portion. So first part I will present, and uh, next part will be presented by my, my colleague uh, Bibhuti Dev Barman. So in the first part, basically we'll try to show what we are doing with the what type of construction we are doing, but or how we are using bamboos in uh, refugee context, especially in Bangladesh, and the second part is the how we are treating bamboos to ensure the durability of the bamboo. So uh, allow me to introduce, I am architect Tanmay Bhattacharya, uh, working in IOM as the coordinator design and construction team uh, for shelter NFI uh, unit. So IOM um, is one of the leading UN org uh, agency uh, who basically uh, working for uh, Rohingya refugees who are basically forcefully displaced from the uh, Myanmar. So you can uh, see the scenario. This is the very small scenario. You cannot realize the, uh, the original situation of the camp by these pictures. You need thousands of pictures to realize that how they are living there. So. Rohingya response already we entered in the sixth year and uh, around 1 million refugees they are living in the 33 camps located in uh, Ukhia and Teknaf Upojela uh, of Cox's Bajar district and uh, basically this the land uh, Ukhia and Teknaf uh, land basically is early uh, reserve forest so uh, there was some permanent um, permanent scope can create like cgi sheet uh, bricks concrete so it it it's always uh, discouraged by the bangladesh government uh, because earlier it was reserved forest so that uh, bamboo and other uh, materials are introduced here as the like uh, temporary items so that shelters are always exposed in uh, cyclic uh, monsoon and face the risks of flood, landslide, fl uh, fire, cyclones. So, uh, temporary materials such as bamboo, ropes, fixing kits, and uh, tarpaulin have a limited capacity to resist the weather, uh, weather impacts and uh, thus require regular repair and replacement. It's very important, repair and replacement, uh, that I will show you in my uh, next slides. And also, these efforts need to address the environmental impact of the provided assistance. So it's a very, very clear link. So we are using bamboo and parallelly we are using also plastic sheeting. So it, in terms of, we have, as we have a lot of limitations, so in terms of assistance, 
uh, there are is uh, different type uh, type of environmental impact also there next so we have two type of uh, shelter assistance here one is basically we um, sorry so we have two type of uh, shelter assistance one when in 2017 and uh, 2018 the first influx happened we our first motto to support them with emergency assistance like uh, you can see the emergency shelter kit one tarpaulin two uh, borak bamboo 20 muli one uh, one piece of uh, rope and like around 19000 household assisted that that time and after that, there was a recur that I um, uh, addressed earlier that re it, uh, this type of assistance recur regular uh, replacement and repair. So those basically updated into the shelter kits. And in meanwhile, uh, there are um, another uh, few shelters um, um, built by uh, built by IOM uh, by plan uh, by uh, as robust shelter. So that I am coming in my uh, next uh, slide also. No, 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 this previous one. So after 2000 and 2000, 2017, 2018, we basically supported the emergency support. And later on, there was a uh, need arise that we have to replace those materials that we have already uh, uh, supported them. Like we called them transitional shelter assistance. This assistance is basically beneficiary centric uh, program we gave the materials to this beneficiary. We gave them the training and uh, uh, we have that monitoring um, and supervision also. So beneficiary can upgrade their shelter. It, it is not building new shelter. They will upgrade their shelter. The shelter they have built in 2017 and 2018. And in 2020 and 2021, we have assisted by transitional shelter assistance to its bit modified according to the need of the beneficiary. And right now, the ongoing is uh, shelter upgrade and maintenance. It's, it's more uh, need-based uh, uh, assistance. Earlier, the first TSA 1 and TSA 2 was blanket. There was no uh, assessment. Whatever the situation of the uh, situation of the shelter, they got uh, received the um, assistance. But in the sum, is basically need based whatever the situation have right now what type considering the type of the damage they receive the um, assistance from our side next apart from this we had uh, another wing that we construct new shelter through direct, uh, uh, through direct implementation by IOM in 2018 we have built robust shelter around it's very small 187 and there is a, another modified form of uh, shelter is mid-term shelter which is bit durable from the, than the robust shelter and uh, it, it basically happened in only two camps uh, you know that um, um, Inukia and Technaf have 33 camps and out of 33 camps 17 camps is under IOM and rest of uh, basically super, um, uh, operated by UNSCR and Another uh, type of shelter is fire response shelter. It's also happened in, um, built in 2020 and 2021. I will brief later. And both these shelter, midterm shelter and fire response shelter, both are approved by Bangladesh government. The size and design was approved by Bangladesh government. And according to that guideline, we built those shelters. Next shelter. Next slide. So this is the basically model of a transitional shelter assistance who receive the support with the material and they upgrade their sh shelters. Next. So here, in transitional shelter assistance one and two and in some program, our main motto was the to ensure the DRR features, keep the bamboo out of the ground by using metal footing, and uh, using treated bamboo that will give the shelter more duro more life span and uh, next and ensure the bracing within the columns so that it will be more um, uh, more uh, strong um, in wings next 
also improved joints, connection and joints. So you can see the uh, dressing part. Earlier it was very, uh, very rustic. They put something just with rope. Also we developed the perfect and, uh, and a standard module of rope bracing as well as the uh, bamboo bracing. And also we developed those connection in between the column, beam and rafter so that all this feature can give the shelter a more strong, um, uh, a strong situation that may, that may because cyclone cannot, this shelter cannot resist cyclone, survive in cyclone, but at least the regular um, wind it can resist. Next. This is the features. Next. Robust shelter. Robust shelter um, in 2017, the background is 2017 and 2018, beneficiary basically built their shelter and the camp developed organically. There was no plan. There was no scope to plan it. So what happened, the beneficiary's uh, choice was to build their shelter nearby the main road so that they can get more relief from the agencies. So that what happened, few camps basically became overcrowded. Then Bangladesh government, especially the RC, the authority of uh, this response, they basically thought that, okay, we have to shift this pressure from apart from the main camp. And they selected some hill in camp 2020 extension. It's a bit far from uh, the main camps. And uh, we planned there, IOM planned there and built some uh, robust shelter, very simple with bamboo, tarpaulin and rope. Next. You can see the construction is the flatland, and this time we didn't um, in that position to ensure the bamboo will be out of ground, and bam those bamboo are, uh, are basically untreated. Next, you can see the next. This is the final output. So it, you can see that it's, it's more looks like the TSA shelter. Basically, earlier this was this was the uh, first step. Then it uh, become vulnerable. We give, gave the resistance and it, be, it become the same scenario of the first phase. Next, mid-term shelter. So how mid-term shelter basically appear in the scene? So we are regularly facing uh, the problem to support the beneficiaries because the shelters are not uh, lasting for more than one year. So within one year, they need assistance. So that we are basically analyzing how we can um, enhance the life span of the shelters. So in that perspective, we had a um, uh, big discussion in the intersectoral uh, working group in Cox's Bazar, especially the shelter sector. Then we find, come up a solution that if we can uh, use the concrete footing, because even if, if we use the uh, metal footing, the welding can be removed whenever it is like having one year inside the ground. So we have introduced concrete, precast concrete footing, which is very much removable and not permanent. You can move anytime. And um, uh, that's how we can use, uh, ensure the bamboo is out of ground. Secondly, earlier the first two phase, the walling and the roof was tarpaulin. And the temperature inside the shelter was really high, really high. So that we introduced the bamboo mat on top of the tarpaulin for both wall and roof. Next slide. So you can see here, so in mid-term shelter, we basically proposed, already built two type of shelter. So one is single storage, the height is only 10, um, 10 point five feet and the footprint is 15 feet by 15 feet, which basically ensure the SPR standard for six person uh, and uh, Bangladesh government is also allowed that time that uh, you can allocate six person in this shelter. And, but problem is that many uh, Rohingya families, they are not within the six family member. They have a lot of kids, like more than six, they, you can find a lot of family there. So, but also the considering the um, site or available land, you cannot give them two shelter if you have seven family member. So that we come up with a solution that, next. This is the, uh, okay, I, I'm just, before going the uh, next slide, this is the internal uh, arrangement of the shelter. You can see, I'm not sure you it's here or not. 
you can see a cement walling here. It's basically we put that, that we, uh, beneficiary can put their burner in front of this. It's basically we put the cement cluster on top of the uh, bamboo mat. So people, uh, beneficiary can put their burner on uh, in front of that. So it will assist the fire. It will save them uh, from fire. Next. So the solution for the more than six. We just increase the height of the shelter 2.5 feet. And add an additional floor here. Up, just after the six feet. So that at least their kids can sleep at night on that part. And it's basically successfully um, worked uh, for the many of the families so who have the family member more than six. But uh, within the same footprint, we can give the facilities rather than giving them the two shelters. Next. This is the scenario of the, uh, this, this tier. They can go up. And there are also a trap door. It's secured. If, all the portion are secured also. Next. This is the different phases of the construction. So here is the concrete footing. This type of shelter required proper site planning. And this is the first time we introduced here. Next. This is the, all the techniques. Next. Fire response. So we built the robust shelter, midterm shelter. In 2021, March, there was a devastating fire spread in three camps, Camp 9, Camp 8W, 8 West, and 8 East. Especially the Camp 9 was affected much. More than 10,000 shelter com completely or partially damaged, burnout, and over 16,000 people were displaced that time. So IOM, based, uh, in the first phase, there was two phase of response that time. IOM uh, response in the first phase with tarpaulin, muli, and rope just to make some tent and just um, grab your land. Because there was some land issue with the uh, forest department, so everybody wanted to keep their land. So the first issue is to have some tarpaulin. At least they can um, uh, make some tent. So in that um, consideration, we gave them the first emergency kit with tarpaulin, rope, and three muli bamboo, small bamboo. So they prepared it. In the second phase, we, in meanwhile, we had a big negotiation happening with uh, Bangladesh government in which formula or in which site we can build the new shelter for them. And at that time, Bangladesh government approved instead of 15 by 15 feet, they approved 10 feet by 15 feet. It is a bit less than the sphere standard, but they allocated the same size for the six people. If the family size is more than six, then they will get two shelters. It was um, regulated by the Bangladesh government. Next. Uh, so you can see the difference. It's only completely burned out. It's, com it's from Camp 9. It's basically after completing the all the shelters in the camp. Next. This is the uh, design. Yes. Next. 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 Yes. Uh, uh, previous. Previous. It's a, another. I, I, I'm just moving from the shelter to facilities. Now, uh, I, I can give the reference to the honorable um, minister. Foreign Minister, uh, the, in the morning session, that uh, considering the uh, Rohingya response, also permanentism, we cannot do anything concrete there except WFP World Food Program. They need a secured a space for securing their food. Except this, even hospital should be made of bamboo, and we add up these things. And these hospitals basically severe acute respiratory infection, isolation, and uh, treatment centers dedicated for COVID and built in 2019, 120-bed hospital with full facilities except ICU and CCU. In this hospital, we had the high flow of oxygen. We ensured it to each bed having an oxygen generator, which also secured by bamboo structure. So you can see the whole, this is the 
six words having the doctor's station, everything is there. It looks like a complete hospital. Next. Here you can see the beds and high flow oxygen nozzle also here. It's all installed on top of the bamboo mat or bamboo. It's all bamboo. The floor is the concrete. It was specially permitted by the government for this hospital. Next. Next. This is also another primary uh, health clinic completely made by uh, uh, bamboo. Next. This is also we have a protection team and for protection team we have the women and girls safe space. These all are bamboo. Next. Site management team who basically manage the camps. Next. Next. Also we have several training shed for Bangladesh government and uh, other uh, UN agencies. So you can see the uh, bamboo sheds also here. It's all training center, open training center. Next. So for my side, this is the last slide. And, um, Bibutida will take over. And this is also our uh, office premises because we are not doing the bamboo things only for the refugees. That we are living in, it's not like that we are living in concrete structure and giving them the uh, bamboo structure to live. This is also, we have ever adopted, we have many others bamboo structure that occupied by our officials. So this is from my part. I will request Bibhutida uh, for taking over the next slide. Uh, thank you, uh, Tanmaja, and uh, very good afternoon, everybody. So uh, I like to present our uh, IOM uh, bamboo treatment facilities. So please, next slide. Next. This is uh, uh, IOM bamboo treatment facilities. It is in uh, Technop, uh, Upozala. Um, it is uh, around uh, 19 square meter, uh, 90,000 square meters. Next. So uh, why you teach it bamboo? Uh, uh, Tanmoida de uh, described uh, 2017 and 18, we use uh, Rohingya camp untreated bamboo near about uh, 24 uh, million bamboos. So uh, government of Bangladesh and uh, shelter sector decided so use uh, treated bamboo in everywhere in camp area. And we are uh, treated bamboo for uh, insect and uh, fungal free. So next. So our capacity, facilities capacities is uh, daily capacity of uh, 22,500 uh, uh, columns per day. And monthly capacity is uh, 60,000. Uh, at full capacity of uh, 440 uh, host community worker are engaged the facilities. Next. So uh, we treated bamboo, uh, maintain some uh, step. Here is a summary and uh, I uh, go through one by one. Next. So this is the uh, quality section. When uh, vendors supply the bamboo, we uh, check our quality according to our specifications. Next. So this is a cutting section. So we ensure uh, this section, uh, uh, our specification, 50, uh, 20 feet. Yes. Next. So this is a cleaning uh, section. This uh, section, we are uh, cleaning the nodes and scrub for uh, observation of uh, chemical. Next. So this is uh, mainly uh, drilling section. We uh, drill the inner node for absorbing uh, chemical. Next. So this is washing station. Next. So uh, mainly uh, this is the main uh, treatment facilities tanks. So uh, this section uh, only for uh, loading the bamboo in the tanks. Next. 
So this is actual treatment uh, plan. So we have uh, 13 tanks, uh, per tanks capacity is 200, uh, uh, sorry, 2000 bamboo poles. So we treat it um, uh, with uh, body acid and uh, borax acid. So we are soaking these tanks uh, seven days. After seven days, we full out it. So basically, uh, this uh, technical support we uh, received from uh, BFRI, Bangladesh Forest Research Institute, Chattogram. Next. So after uh, see, uh, after seven days, uh, we full out this bamboo. Next. So we full out and uh, we uh, uh, stake in uh, our uh, dry uh, vertical dry rack. Uh, after uh, two or three days, we uh, shift it uh, our uh, horizontal leg. Next. This is our horizontal uh, racks and uh, store racks also. So uh, after one day, we are uh, uh, drying hair and uh, we release from uh, camps area and uh, our requirement place in our uh, office. Next. So in uh, bamboo crafts, we uh, make a uh, bamboo circle for our filtration, our chemical filtration. So next. So this is the uh, filtration point. So very quickly, this is the short uh, of our treatment process. Thank you, everybody. Hello, Mr. Singming. Are you hearing? Or yes, yes, I'm. I'm ready. Okay, so, so uh, okay, so is it my turn now? Please, you can go ahead. Okay. Okay. Now try to share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, so thank you for the invitation to the speech. Uh, I also thank you for the Kamash to co-work with him for the last three years. So today my talk will be focused on the SDG 17 for partnership and the SDG 17 for how the bamboo can become a, a really environment of green product. So my talk will be that you understand, uh, know what we are work on the partnership between Taiwan, India, Bamboo Living Lab. I'm the, the Ximing, that's my Chinese name. Most people call me the Jack, so you can call me the Jack as well. So that's my short uh, CV. And uh, in the Taiwan, because we are in the nice place, just in the central for a lot of bamboos, and we have a lot of bamboo types, which are around the small island. So in Taiwan, a lot of, of the bamboo lovers, then we put a, lot, a new high tech with the bamboo together to become an innovation product. So this is one of way which we are in time, we think the bamboo, and we are, we call it, modern bamboo for modern times. So a lot of us, we are working on how we can put a new technology with bamboo together to have the new innovation product and the new treatment for the bamboo. And uh, it, it's like everywhere that's bamboo, a lot of abandoned bamboo, even in Taiwan, and we try to catch uh, bamboo in the green year, how the bamboo can uh, do the CO2 emissions and then produce a new type of product for the commercial market. 
uh, to make a uh, bamboo village they have the better economic and uh, grow up so this one of the example which we are doing is people join the, our teams they will think the opportunities just like in everywhere we are stuck to using the plastic so we are thinking how the bamboo can replace the plastic etc so many successful new company is coming they to to think how we can treat the bamboo as a new product and replace plastic so some of the technology which are, which we are working in taiwan that's uh, several new equipment for the bamboo industries and the, also new way when we introduce the bamboo to the market and the, help the bamboo farmers or even the bamboo factories they can sell their product around the world uh, this is some of the type of the product which you are can see in the taiwan market and also some part of the world and they are using the new manufacturer way to produce the bamboo product it's within the much efficiency and also with a lot of new technology inside so that, that's part of the way we are working on by using some of bamboo charcoals to become a bamboo by fear or bamboo vinegars so that's the the action in taiwan especially from the universities then we are working on a bamboo that's one of our weak so-called university social responsibilities which we try to make the society really understand how the use for the bamboo how the bamboo can more eco-friendly and also put the bamboo replace practice in action to make a student or young people they think the bamboo can be the future for the environment and the future for their life so that's one of the way we do is we create a several we call it bamboo living labs in taiwan so this is a part of the outside the university we create about five living labs which surround the universities then students can go to the living labs to do some experiment and knowing how the bamboo can work in the forest or in the village etc and uh, today i think i like to share the partnership which we are co-working with a uh, south asia bamboo foundation which is founded by mr kemash salam to in the indias so that's a living lab that's established in the northeast state of indias and for the national Zhongzhi university in taiwan we established one research center in the Punjab IT robot and the one in Chandigarh uh, for the living lab and also one in Chennai. So the four place that's uh, which we are built a uh, living labs and the co-work uh, with the Indian friend to try to build up the new way for the partnership between Taiwan and the Indias. So what means the living lab? That's one of the innovation ecosystem for real life. And using this for interact with the, your society, then make all the products within the life cycles. So it's one way of the, the lab, which is that a student can really go into the fields, especially in the bamboo fields, and then learn how the traditional way we take care of bamboo, et cetera. So that's uh, the beginning stories for how we work with the, with the Kemash and the, how this is work. And also within this uh, partnership by using bamboo, I think that's really can create a lot of friendship between each other. And uh, also we are supported by the Tata group in Taiwan. They also support a lot of our event. So that will be a good way to link university, society, and the industry together. So this is a, a new book, uh, which is all published by uh, South Asia Bamboo Foundation and our team in Taiwan. And each year we have the, this a yearbook and show the people how we can co-work together. So that's a short videos. I try to pray that you see the 
our the living lab. And I think that it's because the time is short. I just quick pray that you can see. And if you cannot see the see the videos, just let me know. I think the video is not playing. That video not playing. Okay, sorry. Then hold on a second. Can you check help? I share again for the the videos. Sorry, it's not a walk. Uh. India Taiwan Bamboo Technology Living Lab has built up to cultivate international bamboo industry talents and establish new bamboo value chain in 2020. We've set up three practice fields within National Chongcheng University, including Center for E-Manufacturing and E-Commerce, Bamboo Tropical Technology Practice Maker Base, and Center for Nano Biodetection. Southeast Shin Bamboo Foundation's goal is to facilitate the development of new partnerships and alliances to advance the cause of bamboo. Living Lab is based on user-centered innovation and develop international bilateral or multilateral exchanges and cooperation on SDGs. First practice field center for e-manufacturing and e-commerce combined with IoT. Here, Bamboo Robot sells eco-friendly bamboo products and has successfully promoted awareness of eco-consumerism. Second practice field, we have Bamboo Charcoal Technology Practice Maker Base. Bamboo Charcoal Mechanical Kiln efficiently increased production value and produced bamboo charcoal and bamboo vinegar. Last practice field is Center for Nano Biodetection. It is mainly focused on bamboo and bamboo charcoal tests developing chemical application. Combine biotechnology and eco-friendly materials, we apply bamboo charcoal to aquaculture. A state-of-the-art theme-based museum for demonstration of traditional bamboo processing skills of the rural population of the Northeast. The museum will be able to give an overview of the world, the rich diversity of bamboo handicrafts and utility items available and used by different ethnic communities in the Northeast. In the future, India-Taiwan Bamboo Innovation Living Lab plans to work on talent cultivation and cultivate professional bamboo talents. Okay, that's uh, the part of the work which we are working on. And uh, this is going on. And that's uh, some of the quick shots for you to see how the living lab opening and how we work together for last three years and uh, how we can co-work for the poor bamboo days with the South Asia Bamboo Foundations. And so some of the social impact. And within this uh, project uh, today, I would like to introduce you one of the project which we are co-work with uh, Kemash and some of the university in India try to create a so-called we call tech, these uh, apps. So these apps is one of the project which uh, initiated by the Mr. Kemash Salam and try to keep uh, all the bamboo knowledge within the app. 
to help the wall of the bamboo lovers, they can understand and know in the bamboo project. So we thank for the Ms. Salam, Kemash Salam to initiate this wonderful project. With this project, I just quick look that you see how the, the apps like, and you can download the Bentec app from the Google Play very soon. So later, Kemash will be show you some of the inside how the, the Bentec and this is a part of Bentec, which we are working on for put uh, more countries bamboo knowledge within the apps to can share the all the knowledge from different part of the world going to these apps. And uh, within this app, one of the key value for the university is we can invite the student through the living lab join the exchange to build up this kind of the apps. So this is uh, last three years, uh, we have many students from India and the Taiwan, they can work together. I try to looking for the each countries, their bamboo knowledge, they okay, can co-work together to build up it. So this is 2020, this is uh, 2021, and uh, this is 2022. So this became a good platform for us uh, students and uh, also for India students, the young people, they can inspire their ideas about the bamboo and uh, look for the new idea in the bamboo for the futures. And uh, in the 2024 World Bamboo Congress will be in Taiwan. Uh, I welcome all of you who are love bamboos uh, come to Taiwan to attend this uh, World Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Min Singh. Uh, we are almost about towards the finishing. Uh, we have seen very exciting architectural designs and utilizations of bamboo from, uh, from India, Nepal, and Vietnam, also Bangladesh, and from Taiwan. So the last presentation is from BFRI. Uh, we have seen just uh, bamboo utilization or consumption of bamboo. Now we can introduce a, another dimension, the production of bamboo materials to, subs to subsidize these consumptions. So the last presentations from Bangladesh Forest Research Institute, I would like to introduce Dr. Mahabu Rahman, who is the man behind the production. So please, Dr. Mahabu, please come and... Oh. Uh, Jack, can you play the app? If you can play. Oh, yes. You want to play the apps. Okay, yes, just hold on a second. Okay, so you, you can carry on. Good evening, everybody. Respected chair, co chair, delegates. One minute. You can, you can finish this presentation within eight minutes. Okay, thank you. I will try to my best because I am presenting as extra, I think so. So, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, actually, I am from Bangladesh Forest Research Institute. Can you give me the uh, uh, remote that I can go fast and uh, focus on selective uh, slides? Otherwise, it will take time. Oh. So, you go fast, I will go, go, go. Go. Yes, sir. Yes. Bangladesh Forest Research Institute, no, uh, you know, is the national uh, institute uh, which is conducting research on BAM, uh, forest resources of Bangladesh. And uh, today we are talking a very uh, important crop, forestry crop, uh, that is bamboo. And it comes uh, a very important economical crops uh, for the 21st century, as you know. And as Bangladesh Forest Research Institute, from the very beginning, started uh, research on uh, bamboo uh, at uh, uh, pro, uh, for various uh, aspects. You see here, uh, first we started uh, our uh, research, identification, collection, and centralization, and then propagation, cultivation, management, and improvement, and utilization also and agile dissemination of our developed technologies. So 
uh, at the present situation, we are uh, very much uh, afraid about our bamboo resources because you know uh, we have the uh, Rohingya crisis. Uh, a lot of bamboo poles every year we have to supply to make their shelter. So uh, we are thinking about as a part of government government uh, 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 process. Bangladesh Forest Research Institute uh, uh, is emphasizing on their on uh, materials, resource materials development and dissemination among the cultivators. So I am moving how we are doing this job. Go first. Next. So I am not uh, talking about this. Go first. Go. Here, I think no need to discuss about this because time is very limited. You go. Uh, from our uh, part, so we started in uh, 1972 to 73 to centralize and introducing bamboo species as a bamboo uh, uh, as a uh, bamboo germplasm center. We established this germplasm center as BFRI headquarters. And already we have 36 uh, bamboo uh, species. Uh, um, uh, some is from introducing our neighboring countries, China, uh, Thailand, as well as India also. And all our uh, others are our indigenous species. And all are uh, conserved in this bamboo system. And it is providing the information of bamboo as well as uh, we are uh, using the research materials for uh, further increasing our uh, bamboo population as well. So, go first. Here, uh, how we are uh, producing the bamboo seedlings. Uh, here, uh, we are uh, practicing macro propagation as well as micro propagation. And also, we are uh, managing the existing bamboo groups to uh, increase our productivity and bamboo improvement also we develop uh, already three uh, new bamboo lines uh, from tissue culture uh, uh, research so uh, we can go forward this is the um, uh, 10 bamboo species we developed the bamboo branch cutting uh, technology uh, uh, through branch cutting we can produce the um, uh, uh, large scale uh, planting materials uh, from uh, all these bamboo species with different uh, percentages there. So some is very uh, promising. Uh, 90 to 95 percent uh, uh, seedling can, uh, could be produced from uh, branch cutting. This is the conventional method and uh, very easy and adaptable. And this technology is also disseminating among our end user grassroots level. Also, we uh, in 2000. Uh, 18, we also uh, disseminated this uh, technology in the West Bengal of India, and there are uh, maybe eight districts uh, they are practicing this uh, branch cutting techniques also. Next. This is the steps of uh, branch cutting of bamboos uh, for bamboo propagule reproduction, very easy method, and our farmers and the uh, other in end users can easily practice this uh, procedure and produce a large scale uh, planting material. Next. This is the um, uh, nursery of bamboo uh, uh, production, bamboo seedling production from branch cutting. Okay. Another method so we develop uh, the macro proliferation of uh, bamboo seedlings from uh, on seedlings within three months we can proliferate. Uh, the um, seedlings to make more than three or five times of uh, seedlings. So it is uh, another uh, procedure that uh, we can use for large scale planting materi material. Next. Uh, so another modern technology that is a vegetative uh, propagation uh, tool, plant tissue culture, uh, which, pla which bamboos are not suitable for branch cutting and other technologies. So we can go for uh, tissue culture techniques and uh, we can produce uh, seedlings uh, without any seasonal effect. Uh, so we can 
uh, we can continue this process for plant production all over the year. Uh, so within very short time, we can produce a large number of uh, planting material through tissue culture. Uh, so uh, through tissue culture, we, we already developed 14 bamboo species uh, of our uh, country and these uh, the seedlings also distributed to uh, our uh, planters and the field performance of tissue culture plantlets is very promising. It is uh, sometimes five to seven times of conventional uh, uh, seedlings that is uh, produced from branch cutting and other techniques. So next, here the uh, bamboo species uh, we we develop tissue culture protocol. Next. This is the procedure for tissue culture. Next. 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 And it is the uh, tissue culture seedlings at uh, BFRI nursery. And uh, we are continuing this process all the year and producing huge number of uh, plantlets to distribute the planters. Okay. It is the established bamboo uh, field of uh, tissue culture plantlets. Okay. Next. Uh, uh, sorry, you, you stay here. We develop uh, three new bamboo lines, uh, BB1, BFRI bamboo line, BB1, BS1, and BN1. And uh, it is through tissue culture. And already uh, it is distributed uh, among the farmers, and they are happy to uh, get the productivity of this uh, new bamboo lines. Okay. Another uh, technique that we have developed uh, the existing bamboo clumps should be managed uh, for, uh, uh, for increasing our productivity. And we have the result that at least 40 to 50 percent productivity could be. Uh, increase uh, through this practice. Okay. Here is the uh, seedling distribution of different uh, uh, about the uh, among the farmers. So, so no, no, you go ahead. Okay. Go first. This is the uh, nursery of bamboo uh, seedlings at BFRI. Okay, we are distributing the seedlings among the um, cultivator or planters. Go first. This is the technology dissemination. Uh, all the technologies are disseminating frequently among the farmers and uh, the grassroots level. Also, we there is the workshop in West Bengal in 2018. We shared our technologies among them and they adopted our technologies and practicing in the North West Bengal. Okay. Go first. Okay. 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 You go first. Go first. We have also practiced on bamboo utilizing utilization. We developed uh, some uh, some materials for bamboo uh, product development: bamboo panel board, bamboo particle board, bamboo medium density fiber board, bamboo lumber, and platinum bamboo board. Also, okay. Next. Okay. Go first. Here is the bamboo panel board. Uh, finally, we produce from uh, uh, maybe it is uh, from Borak bamboo, bamboo sabalkawa. Okay. Composite furniture developed uh, by BFRI. Okay. Go. Particle board. Okay. Okay. Furniture from particle board. So we have some results. Okay, thank you very much for your patient hearing. Uh, 
Dr. Huang, are you there? So he's left. Is he coming online? He's there online, but it's unmuted by the system. Okay, um, Dr. Huang? I'm okay now. Can you hear me? Yeah, please play yeah. the app. Just to present the app. No, no, sir. Just say when you the app. Yeah. Uh, please inaugurate the app. Thank you once again, Dr. Shiming, Jack Huang. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want to take the floor? You're welcome. <laughs> no, if you want to. Okay, let's uh, thank you all. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, it has been a long and extended session, uh, but I must say, at least I found it very informative. And in the three bamboo sessions that we have had so marvelously curated by uh, Kamesh Salam, I think we've covered a lot of ground from climate change to, uh, to uh, livelihood issues, to research and development, to uh, lifestyle, you know, lifestyle furniture, uh, to design, to architecture, to disaster relief, and also, of course, a, a, a slightly curtailed presentation on what the Bangladesh Forest Research Institute is doing in the area of bamboo research and propagation and development. So thank you all uh, very much for this and my strongest compliments to uh, Mr. Salam for putting together and curating these three sessions that I think together have been really comprehensive. And it's been a really a kind of event within an event, uh, an event on bamboo within the larger event on the 10th Eastern Himalaya Nature Nomics Forum uh, that we have had and we would like to thank our hosts in particular uh, Bangladesh and our friends from Bangladesh for co-hosting uh, and organizing this event. Thank you. And of course uh, nothing would be complete without a really hearty thanks to all our uh, participants and presenters and uh, I forgot to mention the area of trade and investment right, right. and uh, you know I forgot to mention there 
uh, the area of uh, entrepreneurship and investment, which didn't belong to this panel, but to the other panel. But we really appreciated uh, your presentation, uh, Mr. Howe, on, on uh, you know, uh, the use of bamboo for, uh, for, for coffins. <laughs> that was genuinely a very innovative uh, kind of use. Uh, there were so many innovative uses, the bamboo toothbrush, uh, for one. So listen, let's end. I know there is a kind of group there. I, we forfeited our tea break. Uh, but let's end with a kind of uh, 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 an applause for uh, Kamish for organizing this event. Thank you very much.